Avoid hidden surprises, cost of cloud versus on-premise solutions explained. If you are wondering why we are displaying an iceberg picture here, well, what we want to explain to you by this course is what is hiding below the surface, meaning what is the cost and the activities that you probably is aware of, which you can see, which is the tip of the iceberg sticking up of the water, and which are the activities and the cost that is less obvious and, so to speak, hidden below the waterline. So what we want to do is we first, before we get into explaining the activities and cost, let's have a look at the cost models between on-premise and cloud solutions. So if we look at on-premise first, on-premise, basically all investments are on you. That means if you need to scale up your solution, you will require an investment. If you need to scale down your solution, you will likely have a sunk cost that you can no longer benefit from or realize that you will have to write off. So key thing here is all investments are on you. And that goes for licenses maintenance. Ongoing license maintenance fees is something that you will have to cater for. And if you scale up, the license maintenance fee might go up. If you scale down, it might go down or you might not be able to get a, a, a discount. And it might even be that you have to invest further in additional licenses. Same goes for hardware refresh and upgrade investments. So because you are owning the hardware and you are managing the hardware in your on-premise data center or server room, that also means that you are responsible for all investments related to hardware refresh and upgrades as you want to scale your solution. So everything is on you. That is the key on the on-premise cost model. For the cloud-based, it looks different. Basically here, it's a 100% subscription-based model. And what that means is that you pay what you use. If you scale up, you pay more. If you scale down, you pay less. There is no dedicated hardware-related cost. It is bundled into the subscription fee from the cloud provider. If they have to increase hardware, replace hardware, refresh hardware, it is not of a concern to you as you are buying capacity, CPU, processing power, software uh, as a service, etc. You are buying the cloud as a service. Same thing for the software license fees. There is, of course, software licenses involved, but it is calculated into the subscription-based fee. There is no dedicated software license fee. You do not have to buy licenses additional if you scale up. You will simply pay a higher subscription fee as you are now adding users. And when you scale down, you will pay less. It's a flexible pay what you use model. So hopefully that is clear to everyone. Now let's look at the cloud versus on-premise activities and actual costs. So what we want to do is we want to use the iceberg model. And that means that we will put a line here indicating the water line, water uh, level, and whatever is above the line is what is 100% visible. That is the project activities that you should be used to running a project and running any implementation of a solution. What is less visible, still visible, you just have to put your head under the water, is the ongoing support activities. So we will use an iceberg model, meaning we will draw an iceberg here and what is the tip of the iceberg that is on the visible part is what we consider the initial cost, which normally everyone is aware of, whereas what is below the waterline, below the line, the horizon, is the hidden ongoing cost, the hidden part of the iceberg. So with this terminology, Let's have a look at how does it look like if we are looking at on-premise and a cloud. So on the left side here, we have an on-premise and on the right side, we will have the cloud-based solution. So let's look at some of the activities. So on-premise here on the left, we will have a need for some hardware. So we will have a hardware cost. We will also need software in form of licenses and to make it work, we will need some system implementation. System implementation in this context means both 
testing, actually configuring, customization, testing everything, data conversion as well as training. What is not so obvious is what does it then require to keep the solution running? And here we will have hardware upgrade and refresh costs. We will have software license maintenance. We might need to add additional licenses as well, which also have additional license maintenance. It's always, it's all ongoing activities and cost. We will need to do technical administration, and that means both of the solution, the functional business process, the customization, we need developers, and it might be system administration task, make sure that backup, restore, um, user administration, all these things are being performed. We will also need to do patch management. And why do we mention patch management as a separate task? We mention, we mention patch management separately because this can be a huge task, especially if there's a lot of technical, a lot of security patches, including performance tuning. So if you get into scalability issues or performance issues, you might need to ongoing um, tune your system. If you add more users, add more transactions, add more capacity, you need to look at performance tuning. And finally, ongoing training. So we mentioned training was in the system implementation part, and that is correct. But as you will be likely adding new people to your organization, either because people are leaving or that you simply need to increase your workforce, you will need to train those people in your IT system as well. So this is the iceberg of the on-premise. Now, how does this look? compared to the on cloud. So we will not have hardware, we will not have dedicated software uh, that comes as part of enabling the cloud, but we will need a system implementation. In cloud-based solutions, it's often that it is more of a configuration rather than a full-blown development implementation installation project. So we call it the same here to be able to compare it as uh, similar as possible. So we call a system implementation and for the cloud this means task for configuration. If there are some customization that is needed, it could be reports, etc. You need certain layouts. Testing, data conversion, as well as training, initial training of the users. So that's the initial cost or the project activities on top of the iceberg, iceberg here. Now, what is then the ongoing task? The ongoing tasks are, we will have to pay a subscription fee. We will need to pay a subscription fee that bundles everything else together. Hardware, software, everything that is needed for the cloud provider to operate the solution. He will bundle that into normally a flat rate subscription fee, which you can scale up and down. Now, what is normally not in the subscription fee is the configuration changes. It might be that you need to change the, the work process, uh, the business process, and that normally is a separate service fee. But again, it is something that you, since you don't have a team anymore, you will ask the cloud provider to do it through a configuration changes. So that will have a cost normally, and therefore it is mentioned here. And also for cloud, we will still need to do training. There will be new people onboarding your organization, uh, either part of other people leaving or you are scaling your organization. So ongoing training should be calculated in. Nevertheless, you can see here that the iceberg for the cloud solution is significantly smaller than the on-premise. Now, one thing that is not included in the cost model here is network and end-user device support. And what does this mean? It means that in either solutions, you need to have a workable network infrastructure that the on-premise is requiring connecting your data center with the end users, as well as the cloud, connecting the cloud service provider with your end users. So network is required no matter which solution you choose, including end user device support. So end users will be accessing the system, either on-premise hosted or cloud hosted using a device. If that is a mobile device, it's a stationary laptop workstation, 
it doesn't really matter. The user and the end user device will require to be supported, patched, maintained, etc. So this we have taken out of the equation as this is required in both solutions. Even with that, you can see the iceberg differences in the size of the icebergs. And the rule of thumb is that you can actually save up to 77% using a cloud-based solution compared to an on-premise solution. Now, is that a given guaranteed saving? No, it is not. It depends on your specific configuration. Are you using a private cloud, a public cloud, a hybrid cloud? How much is in the cloud? Are you buying the raw capacity? Are you buying a service? How much else do you have in your on-premise data center that is integrated with it? There's a lot of aspects, but it is a rule of thumb that it is possible and well achievable to, receive, to get a 77% cost reduction if you go for cloud versus on-premise. Now, there are other considerations which you need to consider, and it's not just about the cost. There is benefit, pro and cons for cloud on-premise, which we will discuss in a separate topic. But this is the rule of thumb savings that you could realize. With that, there's only one thing to say, and that is get ready to learn.